guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm doing the third part of this Q&A on short fiction. So if you missed the other two parts and you're looking for your question, um, or you just want to hear me ramble more about short stories, you can check out parts one and two. I'll leave those in the cards and in the description. I don't really have much else to say in terms of intro. Um, all my published short fiction is linked below along with other videos I've done on short stories. Um, the only other thing I really want to say is I'm very sorry if you can hear a lawnmower in the background. I would wait for it to be done, but to be honest, by the time it's done, someone else will probably start doing something louder. How do you stick to one project? Should I pants or plot? I don't know if this was a short fiction related question um, or if they just sent this in, in general. I'm answering everything in relation to short fiction. First of all, should you pants or plot? try both and see which one works better for you or if you just feel like one would work better just go with that you know you can switch between both methods like you're not locking yourself into one forever just do the one that you think will benefit you and your project in any given moment i don't know many short fiction writers who plot their stories i think in such a short space it almost feels a little pointless for them you know, I'll make an outline if the whole story comes to me, just in a vision. Like if I'm like, oh, I see the story, I see how the whole thing is meant to unfold, then I'll make a quick outline. For the most part, I think most writers that I know, even if they outline their novels, do pants or discovery, right? Uh, their short fiction, just because it's so short, so you don't really have to worry about messing it up. How do you stick to one project? You don't have to do this, first of all, if you don't want to. It's okay to write multiple projects at once. I write multiple projects at once. This is actually what I find short fiction is great for. I have a really short creative attention span, so um, I get tired or bored or burned out on projects pretty easily if I'm only working on one thing. And so for me, writing short stories on the side is like the best way to deal with that, mitigate that. I get to still indulge in new, fun, little ideas while keeping up energy and momentum for my main project. So if you struggle to stick with one project, then I would try to find a way to schedule in your side projects so that rather than just getting constantly distracted to work on things, you're writing side projects in a way that actually helps like prop up your process for your main projects. But if you do really struggle to stick to one project, which a lot of people do, myself included, maybe it's because that's just not how you work and there's nothing wrong with writing multiple projects at once. I think it just is about finding the way to do that that works best for you. My system, I call it working in blocks. Basically, it means that I try to finish a specific task before moving on to the next task. So my next block might be write these three chapters of this novel, and then the block after that might be draft a short story. And so I try to go block by block by block rather than just working sporadically day by day. You've said before that Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden is a story where nothing really happens. So how do we go about making a plot simplistic story interesting to read? I don't think I've ever said that Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden is a story where nothing really happens. To be honest, maybe I said that somewhere, but I wouldn't really consider it a story where nothing really happens. Um, I love a nothing happens story, but I wouldn't consider Cherry and Jane the Garden of Eden one. So nothing happens stories are great. In a short story, the reader is probably not there for the plot. Like, let's be real. There's nothing wrong with plot driven fiction and there are good plot driven short stories. Don't get me wrong. So if that is your goal, that is totally possible. It's hard for a plot to really grab our attention in, in such a short space. Whereas we can get like a pretty deep breakdown of a character in 3,000 words, but a plot, not really, there's only so far a plot can go in 3,000 words. You're only gonna get like four scenes out of that, right? The key is that the character is interesting, right? Um, but I would watch my previous two videos because I feel like I've covered similar questions to this or questions that have similar principles in more depth. How to deal with short story rejection slash know what needs to be fixed with it. Just because a story gets rejected doesn't necessarily mean something needs to be fixed with it. Maybe it does. I don't think it's healthy to be in the mindset of get one rejection, now I need to go do a big editing pass. You're not gonna get very far with this because you're barely gonna be able to get the story sent out to many magazines. Taking every rejection as a sign you need to completely like re-edit the story is giving your insecurity a little too much power. Most stories will be rejected several times. I talked about this in the second part I talked about rejection. That's just something to expect. Now, if it gets rejected several times, maybe then you wanna stop and do an editing pass. Unless you get personalized rejections, which sometimes an editor will give you a gift and say, we really liked this story, but these were our issues. That's amazing, then you can apply that feedback. Just a rejection on its own doesn't really tell you anything about 
what needs to be fixed in the story or whether it even needs to be fixed. A lot of the stories that I've had published, I sent them out to say four magazines, two or three rejected it, and then maybe the fourth accepted it. So I didn't edit it between rejections and acceptance. It just was not right for some magazines and it was what right for someone else. There are a lot of factors that go into a story being accepted beyond just was it good. And again, I covered this in the last video. So if you don't know what needs to be fixed with your story, then I would seek out people who can give you feedback on it friends, critique partners. There are some magazines that offer like a critiquing service. Um, I don't know, off the top of my head, I think the Masters Review. Give the story a chance to just be out there. You know, get used to, and it can be uncomfortable, but get used to and eventually get comfortable with the fact that other people are reading the story, they have the power to accept or reject it. If they reject it, it ultimately doesn't really hurt you. Like, it just means that they rejected it. Oh well, you know, especially if it's a free submission, you've literally lost nothing. I would take a step back and edit a story if it's been rejected multiple times, then take a step back and maybe revise and send it out again, or if a magazine gives you specific feedback. Once you have an idea for a short story, like even just a random random fleeting thought, what's the first thing you do after that? Um, and when do you know when, whether or which fleeting thought is worth more time? So the first thing I do when I have a random fleeting thought is kind of just nothing. For me, many stories do begin as a random fleeting thought. Now, a lot of the time this fleeting thought is just like an image or something that's just, it's not a story yet. In that case, I don't really do anything. However, once it hits the point where I feel like it could become a story, then I write it down. Let me try to think of a story that was like this. Well, Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden was like this. The initial fleeting thought was literally just an image I had in my mind of a stat of um, a bunch of marble statues in an overgrown garden. That was the initial fleeting thought and that's not really a story. After sitting with that image for a little bit, it morphed into a story that had a concept. I was like, oh, okay, I want to write a story about a woman who gets tricked into a job as a nanny at like a fancy summer home. Then I start taking notes and maybe I even start the story. It kind of depends. Um, every idea is different. If I start to hear the story's voice, then I just start writing the story pretty much immediately. As for knowing which fleeting thought is worth more time, I'm not, I'm not that picky. I think every idea has inherent value. So for me, if I care about something, if I want to work on it, then I work on it. If I just don't want to work on it, I don't feel a draw to it, doesn't, then I don't work on it. Um, I don't sit down and evaluate them. I think it's just, I feel drawn to write this and so I'm going to write it. And if I don't feel drawn to write something, then I just don't end up writing it, you know? I've had a few, lot of little fleeting thoughts that could have become stories, but they just never did. And if I cared about them more and I was more intrigued, then maybe they would have, but I just wasn't intrigued enough, so they died. <laughs> I need very basics of submission, like where to write my writer bio and how to write without credentials. First of all, you don't need credentials to publish short fiction. They really don't care. If you're submitting a short story and you've never published anything in your bio, you would just say, if accepted, this would be my first published story. Our magazines like discovering new writers. Obviously having some publications under your belt gives a little bit of extra validity, but many very high profile magazines will publish first time writers if they like the story. Whether you've published before or not is not gonna be the deciding factor. It's gonna be, do we want this story? And a lot of magazines like being in, being the one to discover new writers because then if and when you become quite successful, they get to say, we were the first one to publish you, right? I think like Tin House was the first one to publish Karen Russell. Don't quote me on any of this. They were like, yeah, we were the first ones to publish Karen Russell. So we we're like kind of a big deal. They love that. So don't worry if you don't have credentials. Um, they certainly don't care if you have a degree. Um, I don't even put that I have a degree in my bio for some magazines. Check out my video on how to publish short fiction. Um, and in that video, I talk about how to write a cover letter. I'm interested in your literary journal submission process. How do you know when a lit journal could be a good place to submit for your story? Do you often think of or research a specific journal before or during your writing process? I ask because sometimes I write a story or develop an idea, but I'm never really sure if it fits with the style of any publication. Okay, I have a lot to say about this. First of all, I wanna advise against the idea of writing stories specifically for a, one magazine. Not that you really implied this, but I just wanna say, the reason I would advise against this is because it's pretty unlikely that you will be accepted by them and then it's like, where do I go from here? It can be pretty dejecting. So we always talk about, does a story fit the magazine? And yes, that's a good thing to know. And you will really only know this by reading magazines and seeing what kind of work they publish and being able to evaluate if yours vibes. However, most magazines that aren't too niche don't have a super specific style of writing they publish. I think it's a mistake to think that 
If you write a story, it is perfect for one magazine. I submit most stories I write to the same pool of around 10 to 20 magazines. They're the magazines that I like and they're the magazines I most want to be published in. They're the magazines that I read. When I write a story, I know that my style of writing and my style of story is generally a good fit with all these magazines. Unless I write something super niche, then maybe I won't submit it to them. But for the most part, they're not looking for something incredibly specific. It's more a general vibe. I really don't think you need to go researching for the most perfectly niche magazine for every single story, unless your story is extremely niche. I have a handful of stories that have been a bit harder to submit because they're a bit more niche. So I don't really research new magazines for every story I write. Um, unless the story is niche and wouldn't fit with my usual pool of stories. Mostly, I just submit the story to the same magazines that I always submit to. If you're not sure if your story fits with the style of a publication, then I would just read the magazine. Um, that really is the best way. You don't have to read a magazine and find something super, super similar to your story for it to be a good fit. It's more just a general stylistic thing, you know? A lot of this is hard to explain and it just comes from like practice and engaging with the industry. The best way to learn how to submit your short stories is just to be engaged with the literary magazine community. Follow magazines on Twitter, read magazines, submit to magazines. You'll find a pool of magazines that work for you and that you can kind of keep submitting to and that fit your writing. Is it okay to submit a short story as a reprint if the first publication was with a very small magazine or is it frowned upon and disrespectful to the first mag? I'm actually glad someone asked this because it's actually not okay to do this, but it's not because it's disrespectful to the first magazine. It's because the second magazine probably doesn't want it. Most magazines, don't publish reprints or previously published work, even if the previous, even if the initial print run was very small. Most magazines want to publish new, never published before work. So if you're trying to publish a reprint, you have to find magazines that say in their submission guidelines, we accept reprints. But yeah, you normally can't do this. I think the only exceptions to this would be if it was published within your university. The reason I say this is because a lot of university journals are only available within the university. Like you you can't buy them elsewhere. It's been published in a very insular way. I know a lot of people who publish things in my in our university's journal, like undergrad journal. So the journal that is only for undergraduate students and then publish them elsewhere and it's because it basically didn't count as it being published because the print run wasn't publicly available really at all. But if it's been published online or if it's been published before, you usually can't submit it again. How do you find magazines to submit your stories to? Most of the magazines that I submit to, I know from word of mouth. So I submit to the Canadian market, which is a lot smaller. We don't have a ton of magazines, so it, you kind of just know them. We all submit to the same 10 magazines here. Um, but you can do research if you're new to it. Um, I'll leave the Readsy Literary Magazine directory below. Research, online research, ask your friends where they submit. I feel like I am losing my voice because I'm in the throes of editing bigger works. This happens when you edit bigger works. So real. And need to be decisive with all the purple prose. I like editing and do find gems, but I feel it is a different vibe from when I'm in the flow and writing how I write. Ugh. You're preaching to the choir. I am not ready to start anything new, and I feel that I only have my voice again when I'm doing something comprehensive. How do I use short fiction to help me get that back? Or at least help me strengthen and explore that muscle? I know everything can't be um, sheaves of inspired magic, but I need a hack because feeling flat and rather worried, I have lost it. Sucks when you read something really magical you wrote from years ago and wonder where that went. Okay, I have ex experienced this exact thing. I don't know if there's a specific way to use short fiction, but just writing short fiction. Like if you're editing a longer work, you can feel like you're losing your voice. And there are sections of my novel that I think I edited the voice out. I definitely edited the voice out of all of the dialogue. The dialogue in my novel, not great because I edited it all to have the same voice. This happens. Um, I definitely feel like I lose touch with my style when I'm deep in the middle of an editing pass of a novel. Writing something with very, very different imagery can be super helpful because it just gives you like a whole new linguistic playground to try. Whereas in a novel, you can get really exhausted by the same imagery over and over and there's nothing fresh to look at. I feel the problem that you were describing in the depths of my soul. I have never related more to something. There's not like a specific hack, but honestly the hack is just like write short stories. 
it's actually magical, you know, it gives you the satisfaction of finishing something, you get to play around with a new voice. For me, short stories, they really do refresh my style, and I've talked to a lot of people who find the same benefit. How do you come up with good and interesting ideas for a short story? There are very few times in my life I have consciously sat down to brainstorm a short story, if I'm being honest. Normally, I just wait around. Um, I had a fiction professor who said once, I'm not quoting exactly, but it was something like, if you pay attention, the world will gift you ideas. One thing that I find really helpful as like a prompt is pick a setting that you're interested in and just pop a character in that setting, uh, maybe two characters, and then try to explore their relationship through their interactions with the setting. And that's how I've written several stories that I wrote where I didn't really have a concept, but I was maybe on a deadline and I needed to write something. Hi Shaylin, your videos have been significantly helpful for me, and I just want to let you know that my stories are forth forthcoming in my school's lit mag, thanks to your guidance. Congratulations! I remember you saying that it's encouraged for stories within a collection to be published first in literary magazines so readers are assured of their quality. How do literary magazine publishing rights work? Do you have to reacquire the rights to publish your work elsewhere in a collection, or are they generally okay with it as long as you inform them that you plan to include your stories in a collection? I am glad that you asked about this. I want to say I'm not the expert on copyright law. This is just what I know from experience. So you do not have to ask a magazine to reprint a story. It's not like with a novel, you know, when a novel is bought by a publishing house, they buy the rights to it, right? Literary magazines don't buy exclusive rights. They'll get something like first North American print right, which means we get to be the first ones to print the story. Or they get like first serial right, which basically means we're the first ones to publish the story. So they're not getting the, the rights to the story, all they're getting is the right to be the first one to publish the story. So literally when you sign a contract for a magazine, most of the time all you're saying is no one else is publishing the story before you are. If you want to put your story in a collection, you do not need to ask the magazine for permission, you do not need to reacquire the rights, because you still have all of the rights. I own the rights to every story I've ever published. Those magazines didn't get the exclusive rights, they got the first rights. All you do is credit them. So usually in the front or the back of a collection, there will be a page where it'll list where all the stories have been previously published. So it'll say like, this story first appeared in this magazine. Magazines expect you to go on to publish stories in a collection. So yeah, they're completely okay with you republishing the story. Um, in fact, they can't really stop you. If anything, you might want to reach out to them to say, hey, I'm publishing a collection with this piece you, you published and they might promote it or something. How do you write an unreliable narrator in a short story? I would say the same way that you would write them in a novel. I can't really think of any reason why it would be different, to be honest. Um, so when you have an unreliable narrator, which most narrators are in some regard, I think it's good to keep in mind, so you have the story and you have the narrator, right? And they're misaligned. You know, with a reliable narrator, they're the same, but with an unreliable narrator, there's, they're misaligned, which means there's a space in between the narrative we're getting and the narrative that actually happened. This can be very subtle or very drastic, it really depends. I think what's important, and I don't really know how to explain how to do this, is to make sure that the reader can sense this in-between space, because that in-between space is where there's a lot of tension, because it's where the friction between the truth and the perception of the narrator, or the way they're telling the story is. So just like in a novel, you want the reader to be able to sense that space. They don't need to know exactly what really happened, but yeah, I would just be aware of that space, that discrepancy, and see where it can cause tension and where it can cause friction. If you're not really utilizing the unreliable narrator to cause any tension, maybe it's not a great use of the technique. Do all short stories have a theme? If yes, please suggest how to take a theme and create a story around it. Also, how do I find the theme of any story? I find it difficult to get a theme out of a story. Do all short stories have a theme? Um, yes and no. I think almost any story, if you look hard enough, you can probably find a theme, right? Like, it's pretty easy to find a theme in any story, whether it was intended by the author or not. Does that mean that you need to know the theme of all your stories? Not at all. If you're struggling with theme, don't worry about it. You don't know how to find the theme of your story, I would definitely not be at the stage where I'm worrying about how to build a story from a theme. Focus on other story elements. Theme is great if you find one, you know, themes can add depth to a story, but it's actually not the most important thing. Readers don't really care about themes on their own. What they care about is what the character has to say about a certain theme, and how what they do in the story says something about a certain theme, you know? So if you're struggling to find your story's theme, it probably comes back to your character's goal, and know what their goal is, but more importantly, why they want it. 
whatever the internal conflict is of the story, it's probably related to the theme or it is the theme. If you're worried about theme, don't. I would never lose sleep over theme. I wouldn't advise building story from theme as a technique if it's not natural for you. So if you naturally think of stories that way and naturally you're like, yeah, themes just come to me and that's the root of story, that's awesome. You do you. But if it doesn't come naturally to you, I really would not recommend forcing it because I actually don't think it's the best way to develop a story. It can lead to stories feeling didactic or abstract. It's more important that you root a concrete situation with concrete characters. Theme on its own is really not that important. Theme is really only impactful when it's applied in a specific way to a character in a situation. I'm gonna redirect you to my videos on short story tips. I have one called like 12 tips for new short story writers and one called 15 tips for better short stories. I talk about approach to theme in both those videos and I hope that that will kind of help. Uh, but yeah, ultimately don't worry about it. I usually don't know the themes of my stories going in and I don't really care. When I do notice a theme, you know, it's cool. It's like, oh, that's the theme. Neat. But it's not a guiding or driving force for me and I don't think it has to be. Should you stop writing short stories while working on your novel? This is really up to you. I don't. I think short stories can really help my novel writing process. They give me a lot of energy. If you're writing your novel and you find that short stories are a hindrance to your process, then maybe you don't want to put them on pause. But if they're not harming the process, then you don't have to. I think it's great to write both at once. I think they can really energize each other. So yeah, this is up to you and just trial and error and learning what works best for you. The idea of prioritizing or not of which short stories to rewrite and focus on more with the intention of submitting. Do you cherry pick which stories are worth the time and effort or do you rewrite all of them regardless of potential publication? I always stuck over whether or not I should dive into the shiny new idea for a story or if I should utilize my time to knock the dust off one of my older stories. I revise, polish, and submit most of what I write. There are a handful of stories that I decided to let go of and not submit, but it was always for very circumstantial reasons and most of the time it was I just don't care about this enough. If you care about a story then I think it's worth working on. So that is honestly how I prioritize. It's not based on what's most likely to be published because who knows? Sometimes a story you're not expecting to be published gets picked up. Sometimes one that seems like it would be really easy to publish um, takes years. Because <clears throat> you girls. It's fine. Uh, I just have one story that I've been submitting since 2017. It's fine. I wouldn't try to evaluate which ones have the best publication future because it's gonna suck the fun out of it if you're trying to write things you don't care about as much just because you think they'll be published. Ultimately the best ingredient to a good story is that you love it and you care about it. That's what will give you the energy and the passion to revise it to its fullest potential. Personally I can revise a story in two days if I have good feedback to work with. If you have old stories that you still care about and maybe you think you'd like to submit them then Go for it. If you really don't care about them, then I'd focus on new ones, but I would just put your attention where it wants to go. I think that's always the best use of your time is just like, what do I want to be working on? What you want to be working on is going to be the best use of your time. Hi Shaylin, I have a more general question regarding your editing process. You mentioned in your short story videos that you will send off your story to your workshop group for feedback and after that you get it back, you will go through and revise. How did you find or organize your workshop group? Is it people from your university, people in your area, or people online? Just wondering how to go about organizing a workshop. My workshop group are friends that I met in university. We were in university workshops together. We wanted to keep workshopping after school. We were really good friends. We really like each other's writing. We like each other's editing styles. And it just evolved naturally like that. I would look in the place that is accessible to you. If online communities are most accessible to you, then look online. If you want to connect with people IRL, then try to connect with people IRL. The thing about finding a workshop group is it takes time, it takes networking, it takes commitment. You have to be willing to engage with people and kind of just form friendships. I'm sure there are places you can go online and I cannot give any examples off the top of my head because I've never utilized them where you can just be matched with a workshop group, but ultimately the best way to meet and create a workshop group is to network and connect with people and form genuine connections with people that's who you're gonna enjoy workshopping with the most. There's no right or wrong place to go. It just depends on what makes sense for you. If you are a student, I would definitely recommend looking within your university. It's easier. 
I would use that resource while you have it. Look where it makes sense for you, where you're comfortable looking, but it's not as easy as just finding a workshop group and then you are in one. Um, you have to put effort into making those friendships, building those connections, maybe reaching out to people. It's not that difficult to organize if you meet some people that you connect with and you feel like you write compatible work and you would work well together in a workshop setting. You can just say, does anyone want to exchange work and be in a workshop group? It's really that simple, but it's also that complicated because you have to make friends and that's hard sometimes. This is maybe a weird question, but do you think some genres are more short, or are more suited for short stories than others? I write historical fiction and recently started to write historical shorts. I would love to be able to publish them, but I have a feeling they aren't easy to place, maybe even impossible, unless they fall under another category, historical fantasy, romance, etc. Do I think some genres are more suited for short stories than others? Yes, but none are impossible. Anything with heavy world building like historical fiction, fantasy, sci-fi is going to be harder to do in the short space because you have less space and anything more plot driven so like thriller even romance romance is quite inherently character driven but also plot driven because there's the plot of the love story is also going to be hard because it's hard to condense something plot driven into just a few scenes it doesn't mean it can't be done and there are people who write very very good genre short fiction there are magazines who publish them i have no experience trying to publish historical fiction so I don't know if there are specific magazines that publish that. I would just do some research and see if you can find magazines that publish historical fiction. As for adding another category, I see why it might make it easier to place if you can't find historical fiction magazines. Maybe you can submit to fantasy magazines or romance magazines. However, I definitely think it would make it more difficult to write because in that case, you're trying to do multiple genres in 4,000 words. The more elements you start adding into a short story, the more difficult it is to keep it contained. You know, historical romance, now you have to develop a relationship in 4,000 words and you have to do the historical world building. It sounds like a challenge. I don't know if it would make it easier to place, to be honest. I don't think I have enough experience in publishing genre fiction. If you love a genre, any genre can be written as a short form. Anything can be a short story if you want it to be. Yeah, it might be harder and maybe I just think it's harder because I've never written in those genres so I don't have the experience, but it doesn't mean it can't be done or that it's impossible or that it's not worth doing um, because there are many people who write amazing short fiction in any genre and are very, very good and effective at doing so. So that was the last question. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, I'll leave a bunch of other resources that I have on short stories in the description if you're still wanting to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video.